If you are in a place where it is comfortable and appropriate for you to do so, please close your eyes and begin to take a few slow, long, deep, relaxing breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. With every inhale, feel more light and peace entering the body and mind. And with every exhale, feel like you're letting go of all tension along with anything you do not want. Inhaling peace and light, exhaling as you let go completely. We picture ourselves on top of a beautiful mountain in the center of a circular grove of trees. In the center of our circle, a bonfire blazes forth, lighting us and the grove up with a sacred golden light. We recognize that this is the light of perfect love and perfect trust, and it gently and easily burns away everything that is not like itself, leaving us safe and serene. Into the sacred space, we invoke the presence of our Creator. To many of us, our Creator reveals themselves to be a father and mother, a god and goddess. Into the sacred space, we also invite the presence of our teachers, our guides, our angels. We ask that they join with us together as we walk upon the way. We ask that we be guided and led so that we can become happier, more peaceful, more gentle, more successful, more prosperous, more healthy, and more loving people. Thank you very much. And if it is appropriate for you to do so, out loud, you can join me in saying, Blessed be. Today I'd like to talk about the aura. The aura is the projection of your own mind through your body. And it's called the electromagnetic field. And so the aura has a dual function of drawing things to you as a magnet, as well as repelling things from you. And so when we are going about our day, going about our business, many of us are very unaware that we have this whole magnet that we carry around with us that is drawing and repelling, drawing and repelling, drawing and repelling. And it really behooves us to be aware of our aura. Now, that's one of the first things we deal with in A Witch's Primer, our free 18-week course on witchcraft. From the very beginning, we get into cleansing our aura. Now, there's a bunch of different ways that you can do spiritual purification, and they're all very effective. You can use incense. I have to do that outdoors. I don't like to burn incense indoors personally. But you take some incense, perhaps some frankincense or some sage, and you place it in a fireproof container on the floor, and you walk about that container seven times clockwise, and then you step over that container and through the smoke three times. And each time you do that, you feel and see another layer of your aura being cleansed. You can cleanse your aura with baths, and the most wonderful bath is just a nice warm bath with a handful of sea salt and perhaps a little bit of essential oil or herb infusion mixed in. Now, the herbs and the essential oils are optional. The most traditional form of purification, the way that I learned it, is by using sea salt and hyssop. H-Y-S-S-O-P. Now, a lot of times people get very upset about the hyssop because they worry that they can't find it and that they'll never have a clean aura if they don't have hyssop. Hyssop is optional. It's really just the salt water that you need. Uh, But hyssop, if you can find it, I prefer the essential oil, but you can also find the herb online and you can make a tea out of it and pour the tea into your bath. It's just very traditional. You could also use lavender. That's another very nice cleansing herb. There's a few of them, but mostly what you need is that sea salt. So then you just soak in that bath. A lot of people don't have bathtubs. They can only use showers. So you can take a little bit of salt water in a separate container or a spray bottle. And then after you're done showering, you can 
just spray yourself down with a, with water with mixed in with a little bit of salt. Another option is to use something like Florida water or traditional eau de cologne, and you can spray yourself with that or pour a little bit into your bath water. There's a lot of other ways that you can handle this, and everybody's got their own sort of opinion about that. But uh, the most important part of that usually is the salt. Now, another thing you can do is to take some very fine sea salt in your palm and scrub your body down with it, especially if you're feeling like you are carrying around a bunch of gunk. If you've been attracting negative things to yourself and that sort of thing, you can do that as well. So scrubbing yourself down. Not only does it get your aura nice and clean, but it's a wonderful exfoliant on your skin. And it's okay if you can't reach every little area of your body. It's just the idea of scrubbing yourself down with the salt. There is fire purification, and that's where you just sit in the presence of an open fire or candle, and you meditate on that flame, and you feel like the energy of the flame, the aura of the flame itself is moving in and out throughout your aura, cleansing you. There's earth purification, and that is accomplished by exercise. You can exercise your body and by work and by labor. Those are types of ways of purifying your aura through work, labor, and exercise. So those are some tools that we teach in A Witch's Primer as far as how you can cleanse your aura. Another thing that we have is a grounding and centering exercise, which many of you know how to do, where you are actually feeling like you are rooting yourself into the earth and aligning with the power source of the earth and that you have roots extending from the base of your spine into the earth, where you're pulling up that pure earth energy that we see as a a white light and letting that light move out throughout your entire body and aura. We have something called the orb of light, which is an extremely cleansing aura exercise where you, after you've grounded and centered, you, you conjure this idea of this orb of light, this white or brilliant sort of silver, sometimes the color of a gas flame, that electric blue, and you see it forming an orb all about you, and you're sitting in the orb. It's like the bubble that Glinda the Good Witch in that movie Wizard of Oz traveled in. That's a good image of what the orb of light looks like. So, That's another wonderful exercise. I recommend that people do it two or three times a day if they need to, if they feel like they're really having some trouble. Another thing that we have in A Witch's Primer is the rainbow light meditation, where you're actually moving through and cleansing your energy centers. We have another meditation that deals with cleansing the energy centers as well. So those are all wonderful tools for cleansing your aura. But the best tool for cleansing your aura is your attitude. Because I don't care how many times you scrub yourself down with salt, how many times you visualize light going through your body, if you walk around with negative attitudes all day long, if you're constantly thinking about how nothing is good enough, or you'll never make it, or you're a bad person, or they're a bad person, or whatever your grievances are that you carry around with you, then you can... Think of that character pig pen in Peanuts. He's always got that aura about them of yuck, right? That's what you get. And no matter how f- many times you cleanse your aura, it won't matter until you cleanse your attitude. And you don't feel bad about yourself. I and mean, we all have periods of time where we have just awful attitudes. The trick is noticing it and being willing and desirous of changing it. Because in the middle of a negative attitude, it can be very challenging to even want to quit, to want to change, to want to pull yourself out of that. Our minds get very addicted to these thoughts of helplessness, or these thoughts of anger, or these thoughts of hopelessness. It's almost like a drug addiction that we don't want to pull ourselves out of it. And we can't snap ourselves out of it. And so that's why we have all of these tools. Sometimes if you can go take that bath, or if you can go do that that aura cleansing around the incense, or if you can do a workout, or orb of light, rainbow power meditation, whatever you can do to, to get that 
energy flowing properly, it can at least for a moment give you a sense of what it's like outside of that negative attitude. But then it's up to you to not go back and fall back into those thought patterns, because that's where your aura comes from, is your own attitudes, your own moods, your own thought patterns. So a mood is something that can change throughout the day, but if your mood starts to center around a certain way of being day after day after day, then it's no longer a mood, then it's just a state of being. And you don't want to settle into states of being that cloud your aura, because then what you get is an attractiveness to things you don't want. And the problem with that is that as you are attracted to those things that you do not want they start to appear in your life, and then you respond to those with another negative attitude, and it becomes self-perpetuating. And so, you've got to be really careful about the attitudes that you are willing to carry with you throughout the day, because they do, over time, make a big difference as to several things. One is what you're attracting and repelling, and two is, if you're working on magic, your effectiveness in magic. It's really common for me to see people who say, I'm going to do a spell for a new job. And so they do the spell for the new job, but they don't handle their negative attitude. And so the job spell brings them maybe an opportunity for a job, but their negative attitude brings them such an awful aura that is so repellent to any of the things that they said that they want that their spell becomes null and void, or they get the job and then they lose the job because they don't take responsibility for their own attitude, for the energy that they are willing to tolerate within their own mind and their own emotions. So, you get to the point where when you work on cleansing your aura through the magical means that we talked about earlier, in addition to keeping your attitude at a certain frequency so that you, your aura follows suit, you get to the point where you're very sensitive to your aura. You're very sensitive to how your aura feels. What I recommend is that if you have a tendency to notice that you have things that recur in your life, no matter what you do, you seem to always have types of negative situations that sort of come around again and again, that you might consider the idea that part of the problem is your own aura what your electromagnetic field is attracting to you. And what you can do is get into maybe seven days worth of this exercise, where you start your day, even if you have to get up an extra half hour early or something like that, you're going to start your day with this exercise. The closer to just having woken up, the better. So maybe just get your first cup of coffee and then get to it. And you just write an entire page of what you're thinking. Just one page of what you're thinking. Similar to the morning pages that you hear about in The Artist's Way, you just take a stream of consciousness and try to get one whole page, like a a notebook, and try to do it with your handwriting rather than on a keyboard. It it works better. If you can't, if if you really literally can't, and you have to use a keyboard, fine. But do yourself a favor and try not to talk yourself out of doing what works. A lot of times we do that just because that's how the ego likes to keep us stuck. So when somebody says, now make sure that you do this, and you think, well, can I do that? Like, okay, but maybe just try to do it the way it was prescribed to you, right? It's okay if it's not cursive. You can use printing, whatever you need to. But try to just jot down as your feelings and your thoughts come up. Don't censor them. Don't try to make them positive. Don't try to make them negative. Just notice what's coming up and write it down, stream of consciousness. And then go back through and take some time to consider each of those thoughts and notice which of those ideas that you wrote down or which of those sentences or whatever they were bring up an emotional charge 
for you when you reread it and put a check mark beside those or circle them or underline those things. And once you get through that whole page, you might have several thoughts that seem to be carrying a lot of emotional weight to them and or thoughts that sent, that tend to reoccur in one form or another. And understand that these thoughts, these emotions that are coming up, especially if they are reoccurring, have a counterpart in your aura that is busy broadcasting energy, pulling things towards you and repelling things from you. And so, until you can reprogram that part of your aura, you can expect more of the same. And so, this is just a way to uncover what those ideas are. Now, when you uncover what those ideas are, then on another sheet of paper, you can write down a thought that transforms them. Now, in Witchcraft Beyond the Basics, we have an actual process for that called Waning Moon Flips, and it's a lot more precise than what we're going over today. So, if this is an idea that's interesting to you, you may want to work uh, that Witchcraft Beyond the Basics course, because there's a lot more where this came from. But in regards to just cleansing your aura and keeping it clear and reprogramming your aura, that's what you can do, is you can then work with those new ideas that transform those thoughts. For instance, if you had a page of thoughts and you keep coming up with this, I'm a bad person, when you're groggy, it can just come up in weird ways. It might say, I'm a bad girl, or I'm a bad boy, something like that. And you notice that that comes up every so often and it feels awful, you just want, might want to say, I'm innocent. You write that down. See how that, that feels. I, I claim my innocence. Infinite intelligence created me innocent. Infinite intelligence loves me just the way I am. Those kinds of thoughts. And as you hone in on the one that seems to lock into the right idea, then you just take that thought with you throughout the day. And no matter what's going on, if there seems to be a problem, you just use that thought to dispel the problem, even if it doesn't seem like it applies. Infinite intelligence created me innocent. You get a note that you bounced a check. Infinite intelligence created me innocent. Right? Rather than your original a response to that, which was going to be, I'm a bad person, <laughs> right? And somebody cuts you off, and your first reaction is, you little... And then you remember, oh yeah, infinite intelligence created me innocent. And you start to really install that idea into your aura. And then it starts to take on a life of its own. And you can do that every day for about a week and see the difference. See the difference as you do that. Another thing you can do to keep that aura clear is to start to become aware of how powerful you are and how magnetic you really are. And the way you do that is by finding a context for this. Now, a lot of people, when they hear this, they don't like it, but hear it out and give it a try. This is another week-long exercise. Take a week and assume that every single thing that you see, that you hear about, that occurs in your life, no matter what it is, you see it on TV, if it's happening to your body, if it's happening wherever, assume that you created that. Now, you may not have created that, but we're using it as a context. Assume that you did. Assume that you're the creator of that. And when you start to assume that I'm the creator of this, okay, there's this earthquake in Turkey, how did I create that? Okay, this is just a context. I know I didn't really create this, but I'm going to act like I created this, right? I'm going to act like this is my responsibility. What do you do about that? You don't feel guilty about the fact that this happened, whatever is happening to you. You start to do the same thing that you did on that on that uh, exercise with the page. You start to find a thought that transforms it. Infinite intelligence is now healing this through me. Infinite intelligence is now using me to be a healer. Infinite intelligence is now using me to heal this situation. Rather than feeling victimized by it, you are now part of the solution rather than part of the problem. Now, again, this is just a context. We don't believe that you created that. 
but it, it's just a it's just a way to hold things in a new perspective so that you start to arise in your mind as part of the solution rather than just one of one of many victims as part of the solution i'm being used to be a healer in this situation whether it has to do with your that check that bounced okay i created that reality for myself so infinite intelligence is using me to heal this situation infinite intelligence is working through me to heal the situation. Notice the difference in the energy in your body when you think about how you're being used as a healer rather than as a victim. What that does is it changes the energy in your aura so that things that do occur to you start to be changed as well. The things that you're repelling start to be changed as well as the things that you're drawing to you. So you're thinking in terms of new context, And that new context is, how can I be an instrument of healing in this situation? I am being used by infinite intelligence to heal in this situation. So, then no matter what is happening, you're seeing it as a healer rather than as a victim. And just that that change in your perception changes the energy in your aura and then starts to change the circumstances. Do you see? Now, a lot of people hear that and they think that we're saying you are responsible for every little thing that goes on in your world. That's not helpful to blame yourself for things. We're just doing it as an exercise. There's a big difference. When you're just playing, I created this. I created every part of this. I'm just playing like, what what if I'm that powerful? What if I was that powerful? Well, now I can be put into a context of, well, since I'm that powerful, since I'm this powerful anyway, I may as well give that power to infinite intelligence to tweak, to change things around so that I can be part of the solution. When you do that, what happens is your aura changes. That's all your aura changes, and you start to notice things moving in the right direction for you. So, that's another tool you can use, is that idea of, I am (laughs) all-powerful, you know, I created all of these problems, and therefore, since I created all of these problems, I can therefore hold a space that infinite intelligence can use that power to do things in a new way for me, right? So, we've got some tools here. We've got some very physical tools that you can actually cleanse and scrub your aura. And then you've got some mental tools that you can use to make sure that you're not installing more problems in your aura based on your attitudes. And then you've got this idea of being the catalyst for change in the world. And that's a really powerful way to supercharge your aura. Because once you start thinking in terms of how much of an effect that you have on the world around you, and then you're able to ask to be used so that infinite intelligence heals through you, that really supercharges your aura. So, these are all tools that you can use to make sure that you're not just going around unconsciously pulling all kinds of stuff to you that you don't want or repelling all of the stuff that you do want. You're not unconsciously walking around like pig pen and becoming more and more depressed, (laughs) more and more fearful, and feeling like failure is your only option. Instead, you're starting to change that, that energy in your aura so that you are magnetic to the things that are good for you, that you do repel the things that aren't good for you. You are protected, and you're happy, and you're joyous, and you're free, and all good comes to you. Why? Because that's infinite intelligence's will for you. But infinite intelligence can't clean your aura for you unless you ask. So, we're going to ask. So, let's just take a real quick moment, and we're going to do an aura cleansing. If you're in a place where it's appropriate to do so, go ahead and close your eyes. Take a few slow, long, deep, relaxing breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. We are still on that beautiful mountain, and there's still that beautiful bonfire blazing forth. And we're noticing that the light from this golden bonfire is now moving in throughout our aura. This golden light is filling up all of our aura. We see this golden light filling up the crown of our head, our heads, our necks, and our throats. Our voices are filled with this golden light. Our shoulders our arms, 
wrists and hands. And since our hands are filled with this golden light, everything that we touch is then blessed with this golden light. We feel this golden light and see this golden light moving through our hearts, all the way through our lungs, as we breathe this golden light throughout all of our auras. This golden light is moving down through our abdomens, into our pelvis, legs, knees, calves, ankles, and feet. We see this golden light surrounding us like an egg shape, and it starts to expand and grow, getting brighter and brighter and brighter. And our auras get brighter and larger and larger until our auras are as big as the earth itself. And we see that aura starting to contract more and more until it's about six feet away from our bodies. Very strong, very vibrant. This golden light drawing to us everything that is for our highest good and keeping us safe and clear. And if it's appropriate, you can say the words, blessed be. And you see how quickly you can do that. You can just quickly cleanse that aura and notice how much easier it is now for you to keep that attitude anchored into those thoughts of peace, those thoughts of joy. And that will therefore have that effect in your aura and then start to draw to you joyous, peaceful, prosperous experiences. Now, when something bad happens to you, again, you don't blame yourself for it, but you can put it in the context that we were talking about earlier of where was that in my aura? How can I turn that around? Right? So, you can, without blaming yourself for it, you can take responsibility for it and change it. Thank you so much for spending a little time with me today. I so appreciate you. Until next time, blessed be.